I'm uh, Dr. Neil Koftenek, and I appreciate the opportunity present to present at the 2023 Zero Prostate Cancer Summit, where we're going to discuss PSMA PET imaging for prostate cancer patients. Just a few uh, housekeeping items before we get started. This presentation does not contain medical advice, and remember, always talk with your doctor regarding medical questions. By way of background, I am a trained urologist and I practiced clinically for nearly 15 years. Currently, I'm serving as the Medical Director, Global Medical Affairs at Lantheus, where our corporate mission is to find, fight, and follow diseases such as prostate cancer. At Lantheus, we firmly believe that better insights mean better decision making, and I believe that this can ultimately improve patient outcomes. Prostate cancer is the second most common cancer in American men, and about one in eight men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer during his lifetime. In 2023, the American Cancer Society estimates there will be about 288,000 new cases of prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is also the second leading cause of death in American men, behind only lung cancer. The American Cancer Society estimates about 35,000 deaths from prostate cancer in 2023. That's roughly one man in 41 who will die of prostate cancer this year. Prostate cancer can be a serious disease, but most men diagnosed with prostate cancer do not die from it. In fact, more than 3.1 million men in the United States who have been diagnosed with prostate cancer um, at some point are still alive today. That's because many prostate cancers grow solely and are confined to the prostate gland where they do not cause serious harm. However, other types of prostate cancer can be aggressive and spread quickly. That's why it's so important to understand the tests used to diagnose prostate cancer, what your risk stratification is if you're diagnosed, and how imaging options such as PSMA PET-CT can provide a more detailed picture of the extent of your cancer and your risk. Screening tests can help find prostate cancer at an early stage before symptoms appear. Two tests commonly used to screen for prostate cancer are prostate-specific antigen, or PSA, and a digital rectal exam, or DRE. PSA is a protein made by your prostate. A high level of PSA in your blood may mean you have prostate cancer, but it's not proof of cancer. That's because many other things can actually cause a high PSA. In general, however, the higher your PSA, the more likely it is that you have prostate cancer, but a low PSA blood level does not guarantee that you don't have it. The digital rectal exam or DRE is an exam that your doctor performs to check for irregular or suspicious areas of the prostate that could be a sign of cancer. But PSA and DRE only tell you whether you might have cancer. They don't diagnose prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is diagnosed by obtaining tissue from the prostate. This is done typically in a urologist's office in the form of a prostate biopsy. The tissue from the prostate biopsy is sent to be examined by a pathologist to determine if there are cancer cells present. Based upon your biopsy results, the tumor will be assigned a, a Gleason score or a grade group. These numbers describe how aggressive the cancer appears to be. The higher the Gleason score or the grade group, the more likely the cancer is to be aggressive, meaning the more likely it is to grow and spread. Information about the cancer, such as the T category, your initial PSA level at time of diagnosis, your Gleason score, grade group, and other results from the prostate biopsy can then be used to determine your risk group. The risk group can help determine if any further tests should be done, as well as help guide your initial treatment options. Cancers in lower risk groups have a smaller chance of growing and spreading compared to those in higher risk, risk groups. Currently, patients with intermediate unfavorable, high risk, or very high risk prostate cancer are candidates for further diagnostic imaging. Diagnostic imaging may help gain a more detailed picture of the extent of the cancer and your risk by giving a better sense of where the cancer is and how many tumors there are to make sure you get the right kind of treatment. 
As I mentioned on the previous slide, diagnostic imaging is often considered for patients with intermediate unfavorable, high risk and very high risk prostate cancer. Standard or conventional imaging techniques include bone scans, computed tomography or CT, um, and magnetic uh, resonance imaging or MRI. CT uses x-rays to take pictures inside the body with a computer. It then combines those pictures into a single detailed image of where the cancer may be or have spread. MRI is like CT, but it uses strong magnets to take pictures inside the body instead of x-ray. It's useful for seeing cancer in soft tissue within the prostate and areas near the prostate. Bone scans work with an injection of a tracer that highlights uh, cancer cells in bone. Positron emission tomography or PET also works with a tracer. This highlights cancer not only in bones, but also in soft tissues, making it easier to see where the cancer is located and what parts of the body it may have spread to. PSMA uh, PET scans use a tracer that targets prostate specific membrane antigen. which is overexpressed in prostate cancer cells. And where standard or conventional imaging may have limitations, PSMA targeted PET imaging has been shown to provide more accurate information. Here's a comparison of the different imaging options, PSMA, PET, CT, MRI, and bone scan. And I'd like to highlight that PSMA PET can detect cancer in bone, and soft tissue, whereas bone scan can only detect uh, cancer in, in bones. Furthermore, PSMA PET CT can detect smaller um, tumors than CT or MRI, and PSMA PET can detect tumors when PSA is at very low levels. This is important for patients uh, undergoing staging prior to definitive treatment who are suspected to have metastatic disease and also in patients with a history of prostate cancer who are suspected to have a recurrence based upon a rising PSA. And this is important because diagnostic uh, accuracy in detecting disease extent leads to better therapeutic decision-making. Hmm. We reviewed some of the prostate cancer statistics a few slides ago. In addition to the incidence of prostate cancer and the mortality rates, we also know that there is a five-year relative survival rate of 98%. However, treatment intended to cure prostate cancer, either surgery or radiation, can fail, and up to 50% of men can experience disease recurrence, meaning the prostate cancer comes back. In prostate cancer, recurrent disease is often diagnosed because PSA, PSA levels begin to rise. In order to confirm this recurrence, um, patients may have additional testing, including biopsies or diagnostic imagings. imaging. In patients who have a rise in PSA after treatment for prostate cancer, PSMA PET can provide critical information about recurrent disease its distribution in both soft tissue and in bone. And it, this can be done when it's in smaller size tumors and at lower PSA values, allowing earlier treatment and hopefully improve patient outcomes. This slide shows the most common sites of prostate cancer spread or metastasis. Unfortunately, some men already have metastatic disease at the time of initial diagnosis. And as mentioned in the previous slide, some men develop metastatic disease after treatment that was intended to cure. Regional metastasis is when prostate cancer spreads outside the prostate within the pelvic area. Distant metastasis is when prostate cancer spreads into other, to bones or other parts of the body. Treatment of metastatic disease depends on an accurate assessment of the sites and extent of tumor spread. And again, this is where PSMA PET-CT can provide critical information on disease dis distribution, again, in both soft tissue and bone, in smaller tissues and at lower PSA values, in patients with metastatic and or recurrent prostate cancer, which could lead to better treatment and improve patient outcomes. So what exactly is prostate-specific membrane antigen, or PSMA? PSMA is a protein that is found inside, inside normal prostate cells. PSMA, however, exists on the outside of prostate cancer cells. And as you can see in this image, 
There is an extracellular um, portion of PSA. There's a transmembrane portion, and there's an intracellular portion. PSMA is also overexpressed in both primary and metastatic prostate lesions. PSA does have some normal limited organ, uh, organ expression, which is important for the doctors who are reading or interpreting your scans to know. PSA versus PSMA can be confusing. And as I mentioned before, PSA is used as a screening test for prostate cancer and also for monitoring after treatment. Both PSA and PSMA are made in the prostate, but PSA is released into the bloodstream and circulating, of PS, P, circulating levels of PSA can be affected by factors like exercise, intercourse, or urinary tract infections can also be affected by just an enlarged prostate. PSMA is not impacted by these factors. It is not released into the bloodstream. And since PSMA is overexpressed and is on the outside of prostate cancer cells, it's considered an excellent and reliable target for detecting cancer. So how does PSMA PET-CT work? Well, PET or positron emission tomography, computed tomography, is a type of diagnostic imaging that works with the injection of a tracer. Uh, is, that's a material that binds and tracks to PSMA on the surface of prostate cancer cells. When the tracer binds to PSMA, a tiny subatomic mo molecule called a positron is released. When this positron collides with an electron in the body, energy, is released and that energy can be imaged. PET systems then have sensitive detector panels in the camera to capture these emissions from inside the body and they use complex software to triangulate the source of these emissions, creating 3D images of the tracer concentrations within the body. PSMA PET is well tolerated because the do dose of radiation is low and there are no known long-term risks. So let's take a look at a patient who was diagnosed with prostate cancer and was planning to have surgery. He's a 63-year-old male, and his PSA at the time of diagnosis was 7. His Gleason score from his biopsy was 4 plus 5 equals 9 in 13 of 16 cores that were positive. He underwent conventional imaging with a MRI, bone scan, and CT scan. His MRI showed some capsular extension, but it otherwise was negative. And his CT scan and bone scan were completely negative. But oh, I, I, so based upon this negative imaging, he was planning to have surgery to treat his prostate cancer. This is an example of his bone scan right here for this actual patient. And you can see both the, um, the looking from the front and the back of the patient, this scan is essentially negative. But he underwent a PSMA PET scan for further evaluation. And this middle picture here on, on is his PSMA PET scan. This is called the maximum intensity projection or MIP of the, of the PET CT. And all these spots that you see here are prostate cancer tumor metastases. These are lesions involving the spine, the ribs, the pelvis, his right collarbone, um, and his lymph nodes. On the far right here, we see the CT fused images of his um, PSMA PET CT scan. And these spots that laid up right are evidence of his metastases in both his spine and his ribs. He actually underwent biopsy of one of the spinal lesions and it did confirm bony metastasis of his prostate cancer. The patient was therefore upstaged from clinical M0 disease to M1 disease and his treatment was changed from surgery to systemic, to systemic treatment. This demonstrates the impact that PSMA PET-CT can have on management and treatment options in patients that are initially presenting for staging of their prostate cancer. Now let's take a look at a patient who is being evaluated for recurrent prostate cancer. This patient is a 73-year-old male who was treated with a surgery, a radical prostatectomy or removal of this prostate in 2005. His pathology was a Gleason 3 plus 4 equals 7 and a grade group 2. His PSA went to undetectable after his surgery, but then a, a, an astonishing 15 years later, he was noted to have an increase of his PSA to 0.8. 
Conventional imaging was performed. Again, this was bone scan, CT, and MRI, and those were equivocal. So it was, it was recommended that he have pelvic radiation or external beam radiation with a boost to the prostatic fossa. But first, he had a PSMA PET CT. And again, here we see the MIP or maximum intensity projection, projection of the PSMA PET. And as these red arrows point to, there is a tiny perirectal lymph node on the right. This tiny area of uh, uptake on the MIP also corresponded to his CT images. These are the trans, this is a representative transaxial image, and this is a representative fused image. And the arrows point to that same lesion, this right perirectal lymph node. So instead of undergoing um, pelvic radiation to the entire pelvis with additional radiation to the spot where the prostate used to live, the patient underwent what's called stereotactic body radiation therapy or SBRT, which was directed at the lesion. And this resulted in less radiation to the patient and surrounding organs and a more targeted therapeutic approach to his, to his, his disease. And as a result, his PSA decreased nicely. So to wrap things up, PSMA PET imaging can provide a more detailed picture of the extent of prostate cancer. PSMA PET CT scanning should be considered as a part of the initial workup and evaluation of men presenting with intermediate unfavorable risk, high risk or very high risk prostate cancer prior to definitive therapy, as well as men who have PSA elevation after failed prior therapy. And I hope that I showed how PSMA PET CT imaging can provide important information about the prostate cancer distribution, extent, and biology. And with this information, we can hopefully make better, smarter decisions and treatment recommendations to our patients. And although we don't have the data yet, I firmly believe that better treatment leads to better outcomes. Thank you for your attention.